Hey everybody, let's talk about the future of action cameras. Now there's a lot of things going on right now behind the scenes that unless you're kind of paying attention and watching what's going on, you may not know. Now, yes, the Hero 6 is supposed to be released sometime in 2017. I'm going to venture to say it's going to be around October, November before it gets released uh, just in time for the holiday season. But there's a couple of things to note. One of them being is that GoPro will no longer be using the umbrella in the Hero 6. So that could be a good thing or a bad thing. Now the company that they're going to be using is a company called Socionext. It is a low-end supplier of video processing chips. So is that a good thing or a bad thing? But we'll talk about some of the things that Socionext is actually developed with their chipset. But let's talk about Umbrella for a second. Now their stocks has plummeted. They're, and it's basically because they're not going to be tied with GoPro anymore. Now GoPro has been using the Umbrella uh, chipset for the last five plus years. So that's going to be a big thing for Umbrella, not having GoPro as their main consumer. But on the flip side of that, it could be a great thing for all the other action camera companies out there, whether it's SJ Cam, whether it's uh, Thi, whether it's DB Power, whether it's you name it, because there's a ton of action camera companies that are coming out on the market now. But with saying that, they may be able to take advantage of it because Umbrella has a new chipset that's coming out. Now they've got the H2, then they've got the H22, which is a phenomenal processing chip, and now they have the new H3. So let's take a look at the H3. Now the main specs for the Umbrella H3 is 8K Ultra High Definition. It's going to be using the H.264 ABC video at 30 frames per second. Now that's 8K video at 30 frames a second. Now the market hasn't really latched on to 4K as much as it should because so many households now have 4K television sets, but broadcasting companies are not broadcasting it in full 4K yet. But that may change as the consumer products become more and more adept to the true 4K, native 4K, and now also with 8K. Uh, it supports 360 degree cameras with dual 4K at 60 frames a second video capture, has electronic image stabilization, advanced oversampling routines, powerful multi-channel ISP for 360 degree video capture and multi-sensor drone applications. It uses a quad-core ARM Cortex A53 CPU with floating point and neon. H3's hardware dewarping engine, 10-bit HEVC high dynamic range. Now, to me, that offers a lot to the other action camera companies. I mean, if you have a company like SJ Cam, and now this is the SJ6 Legend, but this one uses a Novatech chip. But just imagine you get a company like SJ Cam, or you get a company like Thi, or you get a company like Yi that now will have access to the Umbrella H3. Umbrella may be able to discount some of their chips because they want to make up for the loss in volume with GoPro. That's a possibility. It's a possibility. Now this is strictly pure speculation on what these other action camera companies are going to do with Umbrella. But Umbrella has been so popular because the GoPros are popular. Everybody knows the GoPro, you know, if you're going to compare action camera footage to any camera from any of the other action camera makers, they always compare it to GoPro. And there's a reason for that because GoPro has phenomenal video quality uh, and nobody can co complain about that. Nobody can deny that. GoPro is the benchmark. And just like I'm filming right now with the GoPro Hero 5, it is the benchmark. So saying that, if you have the accessibility to get an umbrella chip, and let's say it's the H22 or even the new H3, and you're able to offer 8K 
at 30 frames a second wow wow now let's talk about the socio next chip socio next so here's some of the rumors about the hero 6 that's about to be released and now this is once again pure speculation but 4k 60 frames a second and possibly full HD at frame rates as high as a thousand frames per second I don't know about you but thousand frames per second that brings slow motion to a whole new level for people that like to shoot in slow motion I like to do slow motion and a thousand frames a second versus 120 frames a second I can get with like the SJ7 that's a big deal uh, so if they can get that with the socio next chip that would be something to look at um, now their processor that socio next just released and it was January 2017 is the SC2000 chip and it's a new product from their M10 V line it uh, main specifications on the SC2000 with uh, socio next is it uses CPU, the ARM Cortex A7 Quad at 660 megahertz. Sensor interface. And you see some of the other specs there, which I'm not gonna lie, I don't understand a whole lot of that. Um, image processing of HEVC codec and H.264 codec. Uh, 3D noise reduction, wide dynamic range correction high dynamic range support, distortion correction, video image stabilization, still image stabilization, defective pixel correction. So those are some of the things that Socionext. Now, I know earlier on I said that Socionext was a, oh, what's the wording that I used? Uh, a low end supplier. And I didn't mean anything bad by that, it's just that that's what they're called, a low end supplier. But if they're able to achieve some of these things, a thousand frames per second in full HD can't be that low end of a of a uh, processing chip company. Because I'll tell you this, for GoPro to leave Umbrella and go to Socio next, it could be two things. One has to be that they retain some image quality because you cannot sacrifice image quality with GoPro. GoPro's name is synonymous with its image quality so if they try to do some shortcuts to save some money and get a better profit margin on the hero 6 at the expense of video quality then that's they're cutting their own throat it's like re-releasing the karma the first time the karma drone and instead of a couple of them falling out of the sky now you've got tens of thousands falling out of the sky so i think that if they sacrifice image quality it would be the death of GoPro. So I don't think that they're gonna be sacrificing, even though it's considered a low-end supplier, Socio Next, I think that they're gonna get a lot of bang for their buck, but they may be getting a better price point than what Umbrella was doing. Could be, could be. Like I said, this is pure speculation. But I think the, I think the action camera market is about to take a huge turn, and I think the ones that are going to benefit are you and I, the consumers, that we're going to be able to benefit from this disassociation with GoPro and Umbrella. It'll open up Umbrella to all these other manufacturers that now can really step up their game. Uh, you know, you've got the all winter chip and, you know, nothing against the all winter company, but that video processing chip is horrible. I mean... I've got a camera, an action camera that I had reviewed not too long ago, and it was using the all winter uh, V3, I think, and it wasn't that good. Umbrella is the way to go. Novatech, the 9660, they made a very good chip for like the SJ5000X Elite. It was able to do a lot of things, and I think the video quality is very, very good considering. It's not a GoPro, and considering it's less than half the price of a GoPro. Now you look at the SJ7, which uses the Umbrella chipset, and it's still half the price of a GoPro. So that leads you to say, and especially now, I think the SJ7 
don't quote me, but I think it's on sale now for $170. So instead of $199, now it's $170. So now you're in the price range of a TI, T5e. Um, I think the market's going to become a lot more competitive, but I think that the winners are going to be us, the consumer, because all these camera companies are going to be going to Umbrella since they know Umbrella is not going to be tied with GoPro anymore on their future models. So it gives them some leverage to say, hey, Umbrella, we'll pick up the slack, cut us a deal. And Umbrella may say, okay, instead of doing a deal with just one company, whether it's SJ Cam or TI or whoever, they'll open it up and say, okay, fine, uh, we'll put this chipset out, you get the H2, you get the H22 at this price, and you can get the H3 if you're willing to pay this price, which is a discounted price over what we would normally charge. And I think action cameras, on the whole, will still remain around the 170 to 220 mark, even with these better quality image sensors and better quality chipsets. I think that they're still gonna hover around that range just for sheer volume of being able to compete. Now, when you have something that has a H22 processor in it from Umbrella, You've got yourself a great camera if the rest of your firmware now firmware is a big thing gopro has got a very good team of firmware people uh sj cam they've got a very good team of firmware people that are and that's one thing about sj cam that i really really like is that their team of firmware engineers are constantly trying to improve now granted they'll put out a firmware and there may be a couple of hiccups in it and then they'll revert back to a previous firmware while they work on it. But you know, that's the whole thing about they're trying to improve. So many camera companies, you know, when it comes to action cameras, you get the firmware and I hope you like it because they will never, ever, ever come back and try to improve it. That's the firmware. This is the quality that we have. There you go. Hope you like it. SJ Cam, I mean, the SJ4000 is what, three, four years old? Uh, and they still come out this last June. They still came out with a new firmware for the SJ4000. So I don't work for SJ Cam. I have no ties to them. I have no ties to any of these companies. I just review the products and I try to give you an honest review. But this is not really a review. This is just a little state of what's going on with action cameras. And I think that the market's really going to change a lot between now and come holiday season, come December, January especially, I think that with technology as it advances, and I think that with more competition, the price will come down, the quality will get better in all these action cameras, and I think us as the consumer are going to benefit from it hugely, hugely. So I just wanted just to kind of chip that in. If I sound a little bit nasally, I apologize. Uh, I've been a little nasally for about a week now because I never thought that I could catch a cold in September in the state of Texas, but it happened. Uh, I've been sneezing and runny nose and sinuses completely jacked and it's very hard to talk and a little scratchy throat. But, you know, this was an interesting topic and I thought that maybe everybody out there that enjoys action cameras, whether you enjoy reviewing them or whether you enjoy using them. You know, action cameras are not just for action scenes anymore. And I made that comment on the DB Power uh, action camera review that people are using it for home movies. Why? Because they're small. You, you're not walking around with a big camcorder. Now, this is my AX33 Sony 4K camera, and I love this guy. This is a great camera. But when you're talking about weight, size, I can stick this in my pocket, put the lens cap on, stick it in my pocket, and go. Same goes for a GoPro. Put the lens cap on, stick it in my pocket, and go. Um, so that's the advantages of having an action camera. When you can have an action camera that takes really good footage, and you can use it, for your family videos, for even little projects, if you're a filmmaker at all, because I use action cameras a lot in filmmaking, um, gives you a different perspective. Uh, but you know, it's it's a great thing for all of us. I hope GoPro is making a good decision here on their behalf, business-wise. But I also think 
even if it's not a good decision for them, GoPro, it's a great decision for all the other action camera companies because now they can jump on this train. There's no exclusivity between GoPro and Umbrella. So, you know, we'll see what the next couple of months uh, get to release uh, and show us, but the H3 8K at 30 frames a second. Wow. Wow. Uh, that would probably destroy my i5 computer, my i7 laptop. I've got a uh, Asus, and it's great with 4K. It would probably destroy that one too, a, trying to render 8K footage. Uh, so I would have to, I don't know, I guess use proxies. But anyway, I hope you guys have a great day. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing today. A lot more content is coming. I hope you guys enjoy your day. It's Wednesday, two more days, and it's the weekend again. Yay. Like it. Uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.